Hello everyone. Today we are going to go over a recording of a head sculpt that I did on ZBrush. And I'm going to be explaining what I do uh, and the decisions that I make uh, during the video. Okay, first of all, I create a, a sphere. And you can see that I immediately made a mistake and tried to, <laughs> tried to move the sphere without uh, pressing edit, like we saw in the previous video. Um, then I activate, I make the, the sphere a, a poly mesh 3D so I can start uh, working on it. Right now, I'm trying to uh, get a base shape of a head. You can see there that those are the, the main uh, brushes I'm going to be using at the moment. Um, we have the clay buildup. The shortcut for that is BCB, them standard, uh, BDS, and move, BMV. So those are the, the main brushes I use uh, in the first part of the video. After doing the base shape, I dynamesh it uh, with a very low uh, subdivision level and start sculpting. I'm trying to uh, get a get a base shape on my on my other monitor. I have a reference paper on my other monitor uh, with all the pictures that I'm using. You need to use reference. Right now, you can see that I'm trying to get it to look uh, like a skull. Uh, so I'm I'm looking for the the main uh, skull uh, skull uh, shape. I'm placing the space for the eyes, uh, the nose, working a little bit on the jaw. Everything with the with the move and the clay build like mainly at this point. Of course, not adding any details, we're just trying to get a base shape. Here I changed the alpha. I prefer to work with the round alpha, the 06 and the clay buildup. Again, keep refining the shape. Now I'm starting to work with the dam standard. To the ears, I usually just mask it and move out the the clay, and then slowly uh, start giving the the ear the the shape it has. I'm not gonna do um, any details to it right now. Just wanna have um, the ear where it's supposed to be. That's it. And you're going to see uh, very shortly that I realized that I've been working with uh, uh, perspective off. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Um, it will change a lot. Your model will change a lot uh, when you when you don't have perspective mode on. I changed my material from the the wax the red wax material to the matte cup gray because i i prefer to work with this one uh, i don't really like the red one
that's when I when I change the perspective mode back to sorry when I turn on perspective mode and immediately what I thought it was working uh, I realized it, it wasn't really working it was it was looking good without perspective on um, Here for the neck, I'm uh, just masking a piece of the of the head and uh, moving it down. If you press W, you get the gizmo. Control and drag outside of the model to um, to dynamish it and start giving uh, the neck a, uh, some shape. It's, it's if you're gonna be modeling a head, I'm, I'm eventually be modeling the whole body with this, but. Uh, uh, right now, I'm only modeling the head, and um, it's better if you're working with uh, the neck because uh, it helps you. It helps you to get the shapes and the uh, and the proportions. Again, it looks terrible, <laughs> uh, and it's gonna look terrible for for a while. And that's probably gonna happen to to you too. That's uh, that's how it is. The model looks weird for a very long time and until it starts to get sh to get into shape. So just keep refining it. Trying to get it to look like uh like the reference. Again, I'm doing that all the time. I have the I have the reference on my other monitor, I'm checking it constantly. This is gonna be uh, the eyes is gonna be are gonna be a, a thing in this video. I wasn't getting it right, and I still don't think I I got it completely right at the end. You are probably gonna get gonna put a lot of time into into some parts of the of the of the head more than others. Uh, in my case, it was the eyes uh, a little bit on the lips. Now I'm changing to the edge polish. I'm doing this to uh, like flatten the the head uh, planes, basically. Gotta work a little bit on the neck. It was looking way too, way too thick. Uh, it's still gonna be like a, a big guy, but uh, but it was way too much. Start start looking um, for the for the uh, where the where the muscles, the neck muscles go. Same thing with head. You you need to. In your reference, uh, have have you know how the skull is and where the face muscles are, because that's what basically what it gives shape to your to your face. And then you have your fat deposits, so that also like gives it like a third layer to the shape of the of the head. So it's basically the skull, then your muscles, and then the fat deposits. The Adam's apple. Again, trying to put those uh, muscles, neck muscles. Ending a little bit the body shape.
again in that as at this point is more of a more than more of a reference than any other thing. I have no idea what happened there. Um, yeah, just control C and keep going. It was something with the dynamage, but no idea. Again, this is not like completely necessary since we were only modeling the head, but uh, at least it, for me, it helps me a lot uh, to put a little bit of the body. Uh... Okay, so now I'm going to append um a sphere just to uh make the eye Put it into place then um start sculpting around it to get the eye to make the eyelids I'm going to go, I go to C plugin um, and I mirror the sphere to get the second eyeball. Right now we I am I am working with a perfectly symmetric head. At some point, if you want, you might want to break symmetry, but I would advise you to keep symmetry on as much as you can, so you don't have to work double basically. But if you're trying to get a, a realistic face, um, it's always better to break symmetry at some point because none of us are perfectly symmetrical. For for this, I'm not gonna break symmetry since I'm gonna be probably retopologizing this, and I would like to do half of the body and then do the rest. Again, slowly um, refining it, trying to get it uh, to look how how you want it to look. Uh, I realized the the mouth placement wasn't working for me, so uh, I I smooth it out and and start working again. Use them standard there, and uh, I press Alt to create an edge. So now with the damn standard, I'm um, making some of the lines in the face. I personally like to uh, work a little bit on an on, a, on an area of the face, move to another one, and move to another. Like start refining them. Um, each each. Um, 
one it started refining them one by one and then moving refining them a little bit more and then moving again um so right now i'm starting to divide the head in the in some in some head planes um you can find a lot of references that do this uh and they have the the, the different uh pieces of the head uh it's very useful Again, none of these is going to be in the final uh, sculpt, but uh, basically for to guide uh, to guide my uh, my sculpting. Again, back to the move tool and keep uh, moving things around, trying to make it not look like a weird alien. Back to the edge polish, and now having the the marks for the for the head planes, um, I I polish those those areas separately. You can see that how I can I keep coming back to the to the mouth all the time. Same thing with the eyes. Um, those are some things that I tend to struggle with. So I I end up putting a lot of time into into both things, mainly the eyes. But right now, fighting with the mouth. Again, always using references. And by reference, I, I by references I mean like not only having pictures of whoever you are trying to recreate. In ca in this case, I'm not recreating anyone. I'm just making a base human head, but also deconstructions of how the body is. Like when an image of a, of a of a head simplified into basic primitives, like cubes, cylinders, spheres. You can see that the way that I, I like to do the, the lips is uh, to add volume with the clay buildup and then refine it with the damp sander. Either either like the, the middle part to make it uh, go in or the edges with the alt uh, to create that edge.
can see how, how I keep using those uh, head planes uh, to get the, sh the correct shapes. There, I am trying to um, be able to look the eyes from from below to get that round shape. But since I have the the rest of the body in the way, what what I do is I hold Control and Shift to isolate and click and drag to isolate that part. Now masking the areas that I don't want to um, be affected because I wanted to bring the brow a little bit uh, down. And that is the thing that I keep doing. Like I, I started with the, with the brow and the eyes two separate and it felt weird and all the time, and I didn't realize it until the end. And I kept doing that, like trying different things, moving the eyes around. One thing that I had to do was to, uh, at some point, go to uh, Jose, our manager, and ask him if what was looking weird about this, because I, like, I couldn't see it, right? That's always a good thing, like. Either ask someone else or just leave and come come back the next day. Because sometimes you feel like something's off or maybe you don't even realize it. There's something that you're doing that is not right and like you can't see it. But someone else can see it like right away. So it's always uh, good to ask for feedback. Okay, now I'm adding some details um, to the ear. The ear, if you follow follow references and 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 the constructions of ears, uh, is very very easy. If you try to do it from memory, it gets a little hard because it, there's a lot of uh, faults in the ear, but uh, it's simpler than it than it looks if you use reference, of course. And I'm gonna keep saying that all the video use references.
And you can see how I keep jumping around. Like I, I, like I said, I work in an area, I move to the next one, and and I work a little bit on that one and move to the next one. Because sometimes if you focus too much on one thing, like you work on that like um, for a lot of time, and then you zoom out and like realize that it's uh, that it's wrong or you already spend a lot of time in one thing. I feel like it's better just to try to get everything in the same level and then keep move then moving and, and doing everything into the next level and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Also remember to always save your work. ZBrush does a very good job in, in, in saving automatically, but um, but it's all, always recommended to also do a manual save every couple of minutes. Okay, so um, now I now I'm happy with it. Like I'm with the general shape. I'm not gonna be adding or or removing a big part of uh, of the geometry. So I'm I'm turning off Dynamesh and I'm uh, C remeshing it to get a clean um, topology. I'm subdividing it. And keep working on it. Um I lost some detail uh when I received when I see remesh it, but it's fine. And none nothing uh was final there. Uh and now uh, I'm starting to work again with the eyes when with a a cleaner topology. You can see that I'm checking how the topology ended up. I'm trying to um to work on the eyes, but I'm starting to realize that I didn't have enough subdivisions there. Um, so I'm turning on um, Sculptis Pro 
to keep working on the eyes. What it what Sculptus Pro does is uh, it does a, like a similar thing to to Dynamesh, where it adds geometry when needed, but only in the area you're working on. Um, the problem is that you need to have only one subdivision level to use it. So that's why I, I go ahead and delete the lower subdivision levels, since this whole model is going to be uh, reachable adjacent. So I don't really care for the lower subdivision levels. And now you can see that I can add a lot more detail than before. And there you go, you can see the, um, the wire mesh. It gets super dense in the, in the areas you work with, uh, with Sculptus Pro on. Again, I'm still fighting with the eyes. <laughs> Masking the areas I don't wanna be I don't wanna affect. Now I'm moving to the eyes. I select this the sphere subtools. I mask where the where the pupil is gonna be and um and invert the mask and add some clay to get the shape. It helps a little bit on uh, with the to get the eye in in the right place. move tool all the time changing things moving things around it's uh it's always a good idea to see your model from from below to get the, the correct shape of the of the eyes and the mouth
Now I'm doing the same thing with the, with the mouth, with the lips, uh, using Sculptus, now turn on Sculptus Pro, uh, to be able to get a lot more detail in, in the mouth. At this point, I try to uh, get the eyes closer together. I was still uh, not happy with them. Honestly, at this point, I feel like it was mainly um, the separation between the eye and the brow that was bothering me. And the eyes being uh, a bit too high. But I didn't check my proportions, so maybe if I I checked the proportions earlier. Uh, I would have, I would have made, be, I would have been able to, uh, to realize that uh, faster. Again, this was just a couple of hours, uh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours of uh, sculpting. So it was basically a, a quick sculpt, but um, but yeah, it's uh. It would be ideal. It's a uh, it's it's a good idea to to always uh, check your proportions. You can you can do that by bringing an arrow picture uh, here into ZBrush or you know measuring some stuff. You can always 
um, make a render of it and check it in, in Photoshop if you want. Um, doing some uh, quick final adjustment. I'm going to try and trying to get it to look um, correct. This is when I ask uh, for help, and they mentioned that the ice were a bit high, so I bring them down a little bit. I and they had a little bit of a mask in the in the ice, so when I moved them, they they got completely deformed. But uh, you know, Control C, go back, fix it. And yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, saving. That's the, um, the help sculpting uh, video. I hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.